that I'm joined by one of the most sound voices on healthcare and medicine in the country. Very delighted to have Dr. Devi Shetty with us. He's a chairman and senior consultant cardiac surgeon at Narayan Healthcare. Thank you so much, Dr. Shetty, for your time. I have to start Thank by you. saying this. We are doing our bit. Now the prime minister has also stepped in. Doctors have been saying this for a while now. But how deep really is antibiotic resistance in the country? How often are you seeing it in your patients? It is very, very, very common. I, I have been doing cardiac surgery in India for more than 36 years. Mm -hmm. First 15 years, infection was never a problem. We used to give antibiotic just for a day after a major heart operation and nothing later. And any time when the condition of the patient deteriorated, we never thought it is due to infection or sepsis. Today, unfortunately, when any patient following any treatment deteriorates in the hospital, first diagnosis is sepsis or infection. It is a serious problem because most of the antibiotics have become useless for even common infections. It is a very serious situation and people should take charge and must start acting now. Otherwise, we will land in trouble. Right. But, you know, Dr. Shetty, you know this better than I do, that India's, you know, affordable, available health care is now being counterproductive. The fact that we don't reach out to a doctor, we just go to our local chemist, and often they are the ones who are prescribing. I'll give you an example. Uh, my mother was visiting in town, and I called up the chemist to say that I need something for, you know, cough. I just wanted some cough sills, maybe, just for a throat. And the chemist, on the other hand, is saying, why don't you give uh, azithromycin, because that's just yes. going to cure it. Yes, yes. It is very sad that we have reached that level. But at least now there is an awareness. And uh, I hope all these antibiotics are prescribed only on doctor's prescription. And it's not difficult to monitor. The, today, no pharmacist is expected to prescribe, give any medicine without the doctor's mm -hmm. prescription. And mm -hmm. more than a regulation, it is the people who should be aware about the mm -hmm. harmful effect of antibiotics, yes. Yes. Dr. Shetty, another way in which antibiotics get into our system uh, is through poultry. We recently had a massive egg issue in the country. I don't think people understand that antibiotics which are administered on cows from where we get our milk, paneer, cheese, and the rest of it, all our dairy products, or chickens and hens where we get our eggs, and again, poultry from, or non-veg, etc. That also harms our system in a, in a way that we can't help, in a way where citizen awareness can't help either. Could you explain to our viewers simply how it actually enters the system and why it matters? The, 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 the poultry business, if the, the chickens are given antibiotics, their weight will increase dramatically, giving more return on investment for the poultry farmers. So antibiotic consumption in poultry uh, and animal husbandry is significantly higher than its utilization in the uh, pa real patient care. This is a big problem. It used to be the problem in Europe and most of the developed countries. Now they have really, really clamped down on all these uh, uh, utilization of antibiotic in uh, poultry farming. So it's a time for our government also start monitoring the utilization of this very, very dangerous antibiotic in farming. It's very easy. You have to just check the meat and look at the antibiotic content, and that will give a very clear picture. But that's the challenge, no, Dr. Shetty. In India, our food norms are so weak, filtration and adulteration is so, uh, you know, so high that we barely get to understand. Even an egg is adulterated, even the chicken that you eat is adulterated, even the milk that you consume or milk products that you have, you know, don't have quality checks. That's a huge issue which requires policy changes. In your experience, what is it that the governments can do at this point? Because this is a complicated problem. Yes. See, the... Every country went through this phase. Hmm. And now it has reached a level we have no choice. And I'm sure our government will act on it. All we have to do is to take some random samples of meat or chicken or whatever is available and check for the antibiotic. 
and few t- now fortunately these uh, farm and uh, the, the the poultry uh, the the products are getting more and more organized and as it gets organized it gets easier and easier for policy makers also to monitor these things so hmm. time is to uh, you know this is the time to act and we can't delay it anymore because the okay doctors may not prescribe antibiotic patient may not take it but if our uh, fish and the chicken and what we eat if it is uh, virtually you know filled with antibiotic the whole exercise is futile yeah yeah dr shetty in the interest of our viewers could you explain to say my 5 year old niece and also my 50 year old grandmom what happens when you abuse antibiotics when you either stop taking it midway don't complete the course or you take it too often sure uh, supposing uh, your auntie or somebody develops cold and cough it is essentially a viral infection taking antibiotic will not make any difference in the recovery but there are a lot of bacteria in our own body which is just living there and once you give the antibiotic bacteria will taste it after a while the bacteria will become resistant to the antibiotic okay mm. now this happens after cold and cough repeated antibiotic ingestion a year later you develop a urinary tract infection with the same bacteria and doctors as usual give the first line of antibiotic and that doesn't work then they try the second level uh, level of antibiotic that may not even work hmm. then you have a serious problem in hand the fear is that as you have consumed more antibiotic you can take it for granted that your back your bacterial infection whether in the urinary tract or a lung or following surgery will not respond to the standard antibiotic you have to go to the higher antibiotic higher antibiotics have more side effects and they are more they are supposed to be more powerful even they may not work there are times you would have tried all the antibiotics various combinations of antibiotics and the infection just doesn't get controlled and we see this happening more and more often and if this happens following a major surgery there is a disaster waiting yes it is indeed uh, and dr shetty i have to ask you uh, also the concept of superbugs uh, we keep we like i said we know about it pretty well but if you had to explain it to our audiences to get this concept of superbugs how they develop and why india is now having to make even more powerful antibiotics with like any medicine even more powerful side effects that will have to come into picture if this problem is not sorted see the first thing is about making antibiotic in the last few years there hasn't been a single virtually single no single new antibiotic which has been introduced to the treatment it mm. takes billions of dollars to produce a antibiotic that is the first thing i it is not like you give one antibiotic it doesn't get, work you give the second antibiotic there are only limited number of antibiotics for the last maybe 10 years no new antibiotic has been added and worst thing is there aren't that many new antibiotics in the pipeline to reassure ourselves okay we go through this problem but soon there will be new antibiotic coming nothing mm. is coming because mm. it is very very expensive to uh, develop this and the pipeline has virtually exhausted that is the first mm. thing the mm. super bug is a, a, a bacteria which is resistant to virtually every known antibiotic and these are becoming rampant and god forbid if you get infection with those super bugs very 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 hard to control it got it uh dr shetty thank you so much for your time thank you so much for explaining this to us we really hope voices like yours that of the prime minister as well are able to get through but like we discussed it's not just about changing habits we need systemic changes as well we need policy changes and better vigilance on ground especially when it comes to poultry etc for us to actually you know get some of that immunity back and avoid further abuse thank you so much for your time thank you thank you thank you